Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG. Hello and welcome to the Amateur Radio Technician training videos. Okay, with this video, let's take a look at Chapter 1. This is the license manuals welcome to Amateur Radio. It consists of several sections that talk about the many things that are available to you as a technician class operator. The first thing I want to point out to you is this little symbol of the mouse. Wherever you see that symbol, you can go to this URL, arrl.org slash ham hyphen radio hyphen license hyphen manual you will find additional information about the topic at that website. I suggest you do that if you have any questions. We start out with section 1.1. What is amateur radio? Amateur radio is lots of things. That's the, the thing about amateur radio. It's almost like it's 35 or 40 hobbies all combined into one. This picture shows someone who is doing hidden transmitter hunting a fun and sometimes competitive activity for ham gatherings. The next page poses the question, what's an Elmer? Elmer is ham radio slang for a mentor, and it's good to have one. You'll often run into Elmer type folks at amateur radio club meetings. You'll want to find someone who can answer your questions. Until you find someone local to do that, you can post your questions on YouTube and I'll try to answer them or perhaps another viewer will. This section talks a little bit about the beginning of ham radio, which is over a hundred years old. It started with spark transmitters. This answers the question, is it ham or is it an acronym? It's not an acronym, it's just a term left over from the early days of radio. This fellow right here has actually built a small box to send up into space as a secondary payload on a rocket and orbited up there. This was the first orbital satellite carrying amateur radio, or OSCAR-1. That satellite is long gone, but many others have taken its place and you can contact them with your technician class license. This is an example of someone participating in Summits on the Air, or SOTA, with the goal to get to the summit and then contact other radio operators, sometimes summit to summit. Except for satellites, this is one of the highest forms of amateur radio. So, who can become a ham? Essentially anybody. There are no age limits. It mentions here that one of the Eagles guitarists, Joe Walsh, is a ham radio operator. Nobel Prize winner Joe Taylor, also a ham, has invented some very popular software for amateur radio digital modes. A handicap is not necessarily a roadblock to ham radio. There are organizations, such as Handy Hams, that help with all kinds of things to reduce barriers to getting on the air and communicating with other hams. Here's a station in another country that is participating in a contest to work as many foreign stations or DX as he can. Here's another guy working a microwave contest. Here's one of the international space station operators who is a ham radio operator. It's a wonderful hobby. Here are some Estonian youth who are involved. Ham radio isn't just for the guys. Many women are involved, including my wife and daughter. Field Day is the great big amateur radio gathering every year, held on the last full weekend in June. My favorite of the annual contests and a lot of fun. 
Many hams still just love to talk to each other. They love to do digital types of things. FT8 is all the rage right now. Different digital modes come and go in popularity. And there's always the Morse code if you want to. Morse is not required. Repeat, not required. Hams love to build their own equipment, build antennas, accessories, and even small transmitters and so on. Often hams responding to the needs of public safety officials. When there's a disaster somewhere, it's almost always the amateur radio operators first back on the air. There's lots of local amateur radio clubs. Here's a URL you can use to find a club near you. I point out that you may want to do some local club shopping to find a club that you are particularly simpatico with. The American Radio Relay League is the national organization for amateur radio operators, and I highly recommend you join, even though you don't have your license yet. It's worth it just for the magazine, but there are many other things the League does, like the publication of this book that we're using. The other big actor on the national stage is the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. It handles all civilian communication matters in the United States. So why do we get licensed? Well, it's the law, of course, but the real reason is because your license gives you privileges that are not available in other radio services. You can service your own radios, and you can even design and build them. You can put up antennas of your own design. You can do all kinds of things. The FCC just wants to make sure that you are safe and that you do not cause problems to other radio services. Q signals, or the letter Q followed by two more letters, are international signals originally designed for ship-to-ship -ship communications between operators who speak different languages. For example, QTH means what is your location in any language? QSO means a ham radio conversation. There are several others in common use in ham radio. Some hams like to seek after awards such as Worked All States or DXCC, the DX Century Club, which requires 100 confirmed contacts with hams in 100 different countries. There are lots of other awards too. And if you particularly enjoy goal-oriented activity, these will be of great interest to you. Also of interest will be the many contests in which you can compete for the most stations contacted within a given time period or something similar. Some contests just involve stateside hams, but others are international in nature. Here are some unusual activities like meteor scatter, bouncing signals off the moon, and so on. What you can do now is read chapter one and get answers to any questions you have. Read the video comments to see if your question has already been answered. And then watch the video for chapter two. I'll talk you first through what's in there, and then you can study yourself and you can work on the test questions. It's really not that hard. My daughter got her license when she was two weeks shy of her 10th birthday. My son got his when he was in his early teens. It's something that anybody can do and everybody has done. If you're finding the material difficult, then you might be overthinking it. Step back and look at the main concepts. Yes, there is an examination, but it's not really very hard. And if you study this book, it will be a breeze. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.